Then I've got the short term, which is still the 1,000 minus the 300 and the long term now at the 10,000 minus the 3,000. So the total impact is uh, 7,000 that's pulling over to the form 1040 here. There's the 7,700. And then if I go to uh, page two, I'm going to have that calculation on the short term and long term, the long term being taxed at long term capital rates, the short term at the short term uh, capital rates. Now with the losses here, just note that there's a limit on the losses. So let's take the long term and just delete the short term and let's pretend that we had a loss. So let's say we sold them for 10,000, but we bought them for 20,000, right? And so now I'm going to say, okay, that means that I've got a loss, but this is a similar thing with the schedule C where you get where you get now I've got a loss of the 10,000 because I paid more than I sold them for I realized the loss because I sold them and there's the $10,000 loss but when I pull that on over to the 1040 it only pulls over 3,000 and that's because for individual filers the the capital gain losses are capped at 3,000 noting that the IRS like with the schedule C is skeptical of losses they want a piece of your income. They don't want to have to be taking on the risk of your losses, right? So then the question is, uh, you, you, now you have a carryover situation where you might be able to carry over the added losses to a future year. And that's when it's quite useful to be using the same tax software from year to year because those carryovers will be quite useful. Uh, if you have a carryover situation or a more complex return, possibly a Schedule A being involved, itemized deductions, higher income levels, I would ex I would say if you have a new client, I would take the time to put that information into the prior year software 